So we've had this Legion 7i 2022 for just over three weeks now, and here, as promised, is our deep dive on this amazing 16-inch powerful gaming laptop. So in this video, we're going to show you how to unlock this i9-12900HX CPU. We're going to look at how to upgrade the SSD and the RAM on this machine, as well as the battery life, the power delivery performance, the profiles that are available, to show you what this laptop's actually capable of. So we've already done a first impressions and review of this laptop. So I will link that in the description below, just in case you missed that video and you want to find out a bit more about this Legion 16 inch laptop. So benchmarking and playing with this laptop for the last three weeks, as well as listening to the viewers questions through the last video, we've decided to do a deep dive showing you what this laptop is capable and the best way to tweak it to get the best performance out of this machine. And today's video sponsor is Hookies, where you can buy a copy of Windows 10 for just under $17 or £13. Hookies is a great website selling software for a sensible price. I've just bought Windows 10 Pro for just under $17 with a discount code of 25% that Hookies have provided us. Just pop in Windows 10 Pro in your basket and at the order confirmation stage apply the code M25 to get the reduced price of $16.91 or £12. Once you've completed the checkout you will be provided the key within minutes. Activating Windows 10 is a breeze. Just open up the control panel, click on the system and then scroll down to see the option to change your product key. You insert your new Windows 10 key and you click activate. That's it. You now have an activated Windows 10 Pro. And don't forget, you can easily upgrade it to Windows 11 through Windows updates, or you could just buy the Windows 11 direct from Who Keys if you wish. You can also pick yourself up a copy of Office 2021 for a mere $59 or £42 using that same M25 code. Who Keys have a back to school sale on all physical items too, where you can get 15% off using the code WHO. Make sure you see the links in the description below. And now back to the video. So to kick things off, the first thing I want to do is to start talking about the 12900HX CPU in this laptop. Now if you watched the previous video, you know how powerful this i9 CPU is, even in this slim and light 16 inch chassis. You're getting performance better than most 17 inch gaming laptops and thermals that aren't actually that bad. But the biggest question that I've been asked over the last three weeks is, is this i9 unlocked? And I'm pleased to say, yes it is, but not out of the box. So the first thing you want to do when you get this laptop is obviously update the drivers and the BIOS if it isn't already using the Vantage software. That will make sure that this option is available in the BIOS because on the release BIOS, it didn't have this option. So once you're completely up to date, you're gonna to need to go into your BIOS. So when you power on your machine, press the F2 key before it boots. And this takes you to preliminary boot page. Now from here, there are a number of settings, but we need to click on the choose more settings option. And that takes you into BIOS. Once we're into the BIOS, go to configurations menu and scroll all the way down until you see CPU unlock and make sure you set it to enabled. Once you've done so, press F10 to save and exit. This will automatically boot back into Windows with your newly unlocked CPU. Now to control this CPU, you're gonna to need to either download Intel XTU or Throttlestop. They're both great bits of software and I will put the download links in the description section down below. Now for tonight's video, I'm gonna be using Intel XTU. So I've already installed it. I'm literally gonna launch it now. Now when you first boot into it, it'll be on the system information page, which is quite useful. It tells you all about your system, the memory that you've got installed, the processor. And at the very bottom, you can see we've got a nice graph which shows us the temperatures, the voltage, utilization, and the frequency. Really useful for when you're tweaking it. And on the right hand side in this little box here, we've got the actual static sort of information. So this is as it's happening right this second. Now to tweak the CPU, we're gonna to want to go to advanced tuning. Now this can be a bit bewildering. There are a lot of options that you can tweak. So tonight we're gonna to be looking at undervolting the CPU, adjusting the core multipliers, and lastly adjusting the turbo boost long-term wattage. Now there are plenty of other options you can play around with and you can do so at your own risk. There are lots of other guides on throttle stop or XTU which will help you do so but be careful, you can cause a blue screen if you are tinkering with something that you shouldn't be. Now, with regards to undervolting with this new 12th gen CPU, I have found it acts very differently from previous Intels that I've used before. Now before with the 9th, 10th, 11th gen CPUs, I always used to put my CPU offset and cache offset exactly the same, and I'd dial it down until I got a great undervolt, which really did help with system temperatures. But so far with my machine with this 12th gen, any change in the cache offset value causes an instant blue screen and therefore I cannot use that at all. 
So the only way I can undervolt at the moment is by putting the core offset voltage into a negative value. Now, so far my sweet spot is 0.05 volts. I found the higher you go up, because we can't do the cash value, we start losing performance. But at 0.05, I'm getting a bit of an undervolt and slightly increased performance. So again, you're gonna to need to test this to hit your sweet spot. This is a bit of tweaking and playing around and run a few benchmarks to get to the point where you're happy. And as I scroll down, the next thing I'm gonna be looking at is adjusting the active performance cores. Now because this CPU is now unlocked, we can change any of these multipliers. And I've found that with my minus 50 undervolt, I can adjust my eight cores and my seven cores to 46 times instead of the default 44 times for all eight cores. And my five and six times, I can change to 48. And it gives me a nice little boost over the default values. Lastly, I'm gonna adjust my long-term turbo boost. Now the short-term turbo boost is 175 watts, which is an incredible value, and I'm not gonna to touch that because that does pump the wattage, and therefore the CPU right up to 100 degrees centigrade. But the long-term turbo boost wattage at 125 watts is a little bit conservative. So I'm gonna change this to 140 watts. Now once I've selected my values, I'm gonna click the apply. Now this only applies until I reboot, I have to, again, you can actually save it once you are happy. Now, I found with 140 watts, you're not gonna always stay at that 140 watts because you're gonna bring your temperatures right up to 100 degrees and it will throttle back a little bit, but you're certainly getting a lot more than your 125 watt default values. I'm usually in about the 136 or 138 watts. And it gives you a nice little boost of performance when you're purely using that CPU. Now if you're using the CPU and the GPU, you're not gonna hit these values anyway. It automatically drops the wattage down on that CPU. Now that's great for increasing the actual performance of this laptop, but with performance comes heat, and I know that a lot of people are worried about the heat with these machines. You could also go the other way as well. You don't have to overclock your CPU. Sometimes you're gonna want a quiet machine, and you can set yourself up a profile for when you wanna be in an office, or maybe you're sitting next to your partner on the sofa, where you want the machine to be running quieter than having it pumping out that wattage when you're doing some sort of gaming or benchmarks. And in this case, you can just drop the actual turbo boost down the other way if you so wish for your long-term turbo boost. But my preferred way of doing it is to actually change my multipliers. So if I want some quiet computing and I wanna be in that performance profile, I'll just knock the actual some of these cores down. You're still gonna get some incredible performance out of this i9 chip, even if you were say 30 on those performance cores. Now obviously all of this benchmarking is run in the performance profile because that is the, the maxing out this actual laptop. But we do have multiple performance modes. We've got the balanced, which is the white, the performance, which is the red, and the quiet, which is the blue. And if you do change those performance modes, it will automatically cap your CPU and your GPU anyway. Now the balanced mode makes the system a lot quieter than the performance mode, but it caps your CPU at a short-term boost of 90 watts and a long-term boost of 60 watts. And the GPU is capped at 115 watts instead of the 175 watts in the performance mode. So balanced is a great everyday use, slightly quieter system with much more acceptable temperatures. And this uh, quiet mode, the blue mode that we've got here, is great if you want the system to be very quiet. And in this mode, we're getting a 45 watt initial boost on the CPU, and then dropping down to 25 watts. And the GPU runs at about 40 watts. So you're not really gonna want a game in this mode unless it's something really light, maybe a bit of a, a, an indie game or something very old, because 40 watts on this 3080 Ti, you're not gonna get much performance out of that. Now, as well as obviously being able to use the function Q, we could just launch our Vantage software, and I wanna quickly talk about the Legion Vantage software. This is an incredible tool that comes with your Vantage. Now, they do put a bit of rubbish in as well on a default install with this, such as the antivirus software, which I took off straight away upon loading this up for the first time. But their Vantage software does all of the actual driver updates, uh, performance options, and keyboard and backlighting, all from this one piece of software. And it's lightweight, it loads fast, and it's a really responsive program. It puts Alienware's command center to shame. But once we're in here, we do have a number of other options. Now we have Advanced Optimus this year, so you can just put it into dedicated NVIDIA mode through Advanced Optimus, but there is still a MUX switch which you can change from within the Vantage software. You can see we're in hybrid mode at the moment. We can automatically overclock our GPU from within here, although personally I always use MSI Afterburner. I like to be able to dial in my overclock to a better level than they're gonna put on a generic overclock. And another feature I really like is the fact that we've got overdrive on this panel. By clicking this here, it pushes the response time on this panel, which is already a nice speedy panel, and just makes it a little bit more responsive. 
You also have the lighting software now within this Vantage. From within here, you can just change the profiles for the keyboard and the RGB strip, and you can go to the actual customize and it gives you much more granular control over the per key RGB lighting. So although we looked at the internals in the previous review, the question we got asked an awful lot is how about the upgradability in this laptop? Could it take 64 gigabytes of RAM? How about the SSD upgrades? So I'm pleased to say, first thing we did was put in 64 gigabytes of DDR5 Crucial RAM. I will put the links in the description below just in case you want to use the same RAM we've used. Now when you first install it, it does take a few seconds to boot. So when you press that power button, don't be afraid that you can get a blank screen for maybe 30 seconds whilst it initializes that RAM. Once it's done that and it's booted, the machine runs absolutely flawlessly with that 64 gigabytes installed. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get much of a benefit in scores because it is just like for like RAM, same sort of CAS latencies, but you've obviously got 64 gigabytes. So if you're running VMs, heavy videos in work or anything else on this powerful laptop, that 64 gigabytes can be a big benefit. Secondly, we've got two SSD slots on this laptop one of which is populated with a one terabyte Gen 4 drive. The good news is that both these drives come with the screws and the heat sinks to be able to add a second drive later on. And I've just popped in a two terabyte SN770 from Western Digital. I like this drive, it's a fast Gen 4 drive. It's reasonably cheap. It's not the fastest drive out there, but it also comes with a five year warranty. So for a secondary drive for game storage, that's perfect. We've also tried the SN850, which is a faster version of that drive. And I've put the links to those down below as well, just in case you want to pick one of those up. But unfortunately the bad news is, underneath the actual SSD slots, there are some chips protruding or cables on the primary slot. So I think two terabytes could be the max it can be the go because it's a single sided drive. If you try and put in a double sided drive, I think you'll run into some issues. So I definitely recommend staying clear or waiting for the single sided four terabyte drives to become more available. Now another area we didn't really touch on much in the initial review was battery life. And as with all 12th gen laptops, battery life is pretty dismal. This is something that I think is a real shame because obviously with this new 12th generation we get the E cores and the P cores. So I figured when I saw this first announced the E cores were gonna be the efficiency cores which are gonna give us much better battery life over 11th gen or 10th gen. I'm really disappointed because although the performance on these processors is incredible, battery life really isn't. Now the default battery life on this laptop out of the box running at 200 nits of brightness with our usual Wi-Fi streaming test gave us about four and a half hours which is really quite average. Now, if you put this laptop into the quiet mode, as soon as you unplug the power, it does turn off the actual RGB lighting by default to save a bit of battery, and that certainly helps. But we found that if we configured it to the best battery settings, so the quiet mode, and then go to Windows Power and put it into best battery, we also switched the screen to the 60 hertz option with the function and R for the refresh rate, a really handy feature of this laptop. We then did the same test, so 200 nits of brightness and Wi-Fi streaming, and we managed about six hours, which again, isn't amazing, but for these 12th generation gaming laptops, that's not bad at all. If you want battery life, you really need to be looking for a 6000 series Ryzen, and they do do a version of this. We're gonna get one in soon uh, for the Ryzen edition. We'll test the battery on that one. But as always, performance on battery is great. The CPU feels incredibly snappy on battery, and you feel like you're running on mains. The GPU side of things, if you're running the GPU on battery, you get about 40 watts of power, uh, it comes in, you know, on a 3080Ti with 40 watts. You're going to be playing very, very light games or a bit of light 3D content creation. It's not the best. Now, we also tested the power delivery. We've got a power delivery port at the back. Lenovo State is up to 135 watts this year. Now, we tried a 140 watt GAN charger. Didn't like it at all, although it worked. It gave us worse performance than the 100 watt USB-C Lenovo charger we also had on hand. With a 100 watt Lenovo USB-C, we found that the performance was slightly better than running on battery. When we run Time Spy on this PD mode, although it's nothing like running with a 300 watt power brick, we're getting about 50 watts to the GPU and about 50 watts maximum, usually then dipping down to 25 watts on this CPU, which makes it more than usable with a smaller USB-C power brick. And if I can find a 135 watts that works even better, I will update the results for that. But overall, over the last three weeks, I've absolutely loved my time with this laptop. It's a 16 inch laptop that's still reasonably compact and not that heavy. The performance this thing packs is just phenomenal. It outperforms most 17 inch gaming laptops. The one fly in the ointment with these massively powerful laptops is the heat it generates. I know the internal temperatures adequately cope with this 130 watt CPU running at long term boost and 175 watt GPU. It does get warm on the outside of the laptop. The keyboard can get a bit uncomfortably warm if you're in a warm room, such as the UK at the moment with this heat, we're not used to it. 
and running this CPU and GPU 100% load, so you're running Warzone or Battlefield, whatever, that's something that's really pumping the watts out of the system, the keyboard does get very hot. But if that doesn't bother you, or you run it with an external keyboard, gamepad, or controller, other than that, this is an absolutely fantastic machine. And I think, although it's very expensive, this is a really unique proposition to have this much power in this compactor chassis. I think Lenovo made massive improvements with this Legion 7i. Although it only seemed quite subtle, it looks a lot better this year, it performs a lot better this year, and it feels a lot more premium than last year's Legion, and I loved last year's Legion. So that's my thoughts on this laptop. As always, if you've got any questions, put it in the comment section down below, and I will respond back to you. Let me know if you think of anything else that I've missed or you'd like to ask for this laptop. And as usual, thank you for watching.